This lesson covers the types of domain controller available. During the domain controller process, the only option you're given is, is a domain controller, a normal domain controller, or a read-only domain controller? And as previously mentioned, the read-only domain controller is really targeted at branch office locations where maybe you cannot physically secure the DC, so you only want replication one way, and only store a subset of the security credentials in case that server was hacked. But normally, Active Directory domain controllers are multi-master replication. This means a change can be made on any domain controller in the domain, and that change will replicate to all the different domain controllers in the domain. This replication is highly efficient. It doesn't replicate the entire object, which may have hundreds of attributes. It just replicates the changed attribute of the object. And in fact, it even uses linked value replication, or LVR, which means if it's a large attribute such as group membership, it only actually replicates the change to that membership as opposed to the entire group. So all the domain controllers are created equal. However, to quote George Orwell in Animal Farm, some are created more equal than others. There are some processes that just don't work well in a multi-master mode. So there are five flexible single master of operations roles available in Active Directory. Three of these are available in each domain. So each domain has these three roles. Two of them are forest specific. So if we look at the domain ones first, I can access this through Active Directory users and computers. If I right click on my domain, I can look at my operations masters and I can move them. Now, the three available here are the RID master, the relative ID master. So the goal of this is every single object in the Active Directory has a SID, the security ID. And the security ID is made up of the SID of the domain itself, and then this relative identifier that is added on to the end. You can't have every single domain controller just making up its relative IDs. It might create the same ones and therefore clash. The RID master is responsible for creating those RIDs and allocate them in batches to each domain controller. So rather than give out one at a time, it will give out batches of, for example, 500 RIDs to each domain controller. When a domain controller reaches 50% of that relative ID pool that's left, it will then go and request another batch. This means if this server was unavailable for maybe a couple of hours, unless you have a huge amount of objects being created, you're not going to see a problem. You then have the PDC, the primary domain controller emulator. So the PDC was critical in NT4 days as it held the writable copy of the Active Directory database. However, today in this multi-master world, it's not so critical. And originally its role was, maybe you still had NT4 BDCs talking to a Windows 2000 Active Directory. But it actually does far, far more than that. Time synchronization is critical to Active Directory because of Kerberos. Kerberos is the authentication mechanism. It's what enables transitive trust in Active Directory. And time must always be within five minutes of accuracy. So what actually happens behind the scenes is the forest root domain and the PDC emulator of that domain actually synchronizes its time externally. So if I look at my time configuration, I can see it's synchronizing with an external time source. Every other domain in that forest root domain synchronizes its time with the PDC emulator of that domain. So I can see here it's just using NT5 directory services or Active Directory. Every machine that's a member of Active Directory synchronizes its time with the domain controller it authenticates against. So consider that the forest root domain's PDC synchronizes its time externally, then all the other domain controllers in that domain sync its time to the PDC emulator, then all the member servers of that domain synchronize their time with the domain controller. Child domains, or other domains in a separate tree, their PDCs synchronize their time to the PDC holder of that forest root domain, and then the time synchronization works the same way. Domain controllers in that domain synchronize with the PDC. So time synchronization is a critical component of that PDC emulator. It also does some special functions around passwords. So for example, suppose I change a password and I change it at my local domain controller. Well, because it's multi-master replication, that password change could happen at any DC. And then suppose I try to perform some action, authentication at a different DC, and the password is not synchronized yet. This would cause an authentication failure. To avoid that, when any password change happens, 
that password change propagates to the PDC emulator straight away. And then in the event of an authentication failure, another domain controller, before that domain controller would fail that authentication, it actually goes and checks with the PDC emulator to say, has this password been changed? Can you give me updated information? The same thing applies to locking out of an account. This is always checked at the PDC FISMO who gets those details. So as you can see, it's doing far more than just pretending it's a PDC for old clients. It's performing some critical functions. Group policy, for example. Group policy is ideally always targeted at the PDC to avoid any chance of changes that are out of sync. It's very common to actually place the PDC and the RID on the same server. Because the PDC does get potentially more objects generated and created, having the RID locally ensures there's no problem. Now, if the PDC is unavailable for a length of time, you may experience some challenges. So if you know the PDC is going to be unavailable for a prolonged period, you would modify and change it to be another domain controller. These don't move automatically. They're flexible, not floating. So if a domain controller goes down and it's the FISMO holders, another server would not automatically take over. So you always want to move these prior to taking down that domain controller. While it is possible to do a seize operation, it can cause some problems when that domain controller is restarted again. So you always want to move them ahead of time. The infrastructure master really only has a job if you have more than one domain. And the goal is, imagine I have the scenario where I have a user from one domain placed in a group into another domain. Well, that requires some reference information to be stored. And that infrastructure master is responsible for really creating these phantom records that enable that membership. One critical rule here is your infrastructure master can never be a global catalog. The reason for this is the infrastructure master works by comparing its database to those other domains. If it's a global catalog, it already has a subset of information about all those objects and the other domains and it would not function. Now, my infrastructure master is on a global catalog because I only have one domain, so it's not a problem. The only other scenario where it would be okay is if every single domain controller in the entire forest was a global catalog, in which case its role isn't really necessary. So these exist on every single domain. Every domain has their own set of RID, PDC, and infrastructure roles. At a forest level, if I look at my domains and trusts, the domain naming is responsible for authorizing the creation of new domains, making sure those names are valid, and any changes to forest structure, maybe I'm pruning and grafting, I'm moving domains around within the forest. The domain naming master has to authorize that. I also have a schema master role. So the schema master is responsible for allowing and maintaining changes to the schema. Now by default, you'll notice here, I've manually loaded an instance of MMC, so I started start run MMC and I added the Active Directory schema snap in. Now by default, this will not be available to you. You have to manually register schema management DLL, then restart MMC and it will be available. So this allows me to see all the classes. I can see all the attributes in my Active Directory and this is the server that processes any of those changes. So again, the schema and the domain naming master are per forest. There was only one of these in your entire forest. This concludes the lesson on the types of Active Directory domain controller.